On August the 12th, 3 BC, and there's that summer of 3 BC again, Jupiter and Venus, represent, who represents love, Jupiter the king planet, Venus is the queen planet, united as a morning star. So the king and queen come together <coughs> as a morning star. Then they then dis were displayed as an evening star. Venus could be either one. Uh, that reunion was 10 months later. On September the 14th, 3 BC, Jupiter, the royal planet star, right, the wandering star, the planet, came into union with Regulus, the royal fixed star of the first magnitude in the constellation of Leo. Regulus is the brightest star in the lion constellation, Leo, which represents Judah, the tribe of Judah, the lion of the tribe of Judah. There, um, located in the heart region, wham, <coughs> microphone right there, in the heart region uh, there. Um, normally, when you see the Sphinx of Egypt, uh, you're seeing uh, um, a structure with the arms outstretched like this. Uh, it's actually the body of a lion. And then we have the head of a woman there. Sphinx is not a, not a male, it's a woman there. <clears throat> and so we have a woman and a lion joined together. And the Greek word, or the word sphinx comes from the Greek word sphungo, which means to bind together, okay, to join together. That's what the word sphinx means in Greek there. <clears throat> What's being bound together <clears throat> are two signs, okay. <clears throat> These are the 48 constellation picture images before they were erased by modern astronomers into just rectangular um, kind of straight line shapes. There are regions of space. But the picture images tell a story. And again, this is sometimes called the gospel in the stars. It has to do with biblical astronomy. It does not have to do with astrology. <coughs> astrology starts the story totally different direction, uh, the opposite side of the circle here and goes in a totally opposite direction, okay? <coughs> but <coughs> I know you probably can't see this in the back, but here we have in the yellow and purple, this is Virgo, which means virgin. <coughs> and we go this direction, with Libra and Scorpio, and different images which represent um, different aspects of the gospel. And we come back around to the lion, which is right here, Leo, <coughs> okay? The four paws are out, just like the sphinxes are out. And at the heart of the lion is Regulus, okay, the king star, right there. Okay. The um, word Regulus, we get our word regal and regulation uh, from that root word. So we have something dealing with kingship and royalty as well as law and order there. And there are prophecies, um, messianic prophecies that deal with both aspects that the word Regulus uh, deals with. Right. <coughs> On, so on September the 14th, this royal planet comes into union with Regulus, this royal fixed star in the constellation Leo, the lion. Regulus is situated between the feet of Leo. Okay, remember that phrase, between the feet, because we'll read the verse in Scripture in the book of Numbers there and in Genesis, uh, which actually has that same phrase in it. Okay? Situated between the feet of Leo, the royal constellation of Judah. After the first conjunction, Jupiter continued on its normal course in the heavens. Here's Jupiter, <coughs> it's, it's working its way here to the left. This is Regulus, this cross-like star right in there, which is one of the main stars in the Leo constellation there. <coughs> okay, of course, keep in mind that these stars of the constellations are light years away from us, whereas Jupiter, of course, is still in our solar system. <coughs> but from Earth's perspective, this is, this is the arrangement, the relative arrangement of these two bodies. After the first conjunction of Jupiter, it continues on its normal course. Okay. So here we have Earth, and here in the green arrow, uh, closer to the sun in orbit, and Jupiter millions of miles away in its orbit as well. Eventually, Earth, running on the inner lane of this track, this celestial track, is going to catch up to Jupiter eventually, and it will appear that Jupiter is slowing down, and then finally when we get where our orbits, where our position in the orbits are, are straight across from each other, where the Sun, the Earth, and the Jupiter are all in a straight line. Uh, this is called opposition. So the Earth is now in opposition with Jupiter, and during this time it looks as though, optical illusion, it looks as though Jupiter is stopped. Okay, we've caught up with Jupiter, it looks like it just stopped in the heavens, and it will look that way for about six days. And then Earth will get far enough away from Jupiter, will pass it, 
and then it will look like Jupiter is going backward, when really it's not. Okay? <laughs> it's kind of like two cars on the road. You're side by side, and then all of a sudden, you know, your car starts up faster, and you start moving ahead a little faster. The other car is moving forward as well, but because it's not, it's not, it's not matching your speed, it's kind of falling behind your speed. It looks as though they're going backwards. Okay? This is called retrograde revolution. There. Okay? And that's going to be an important thing when we get to Matthew chapter 2. Right? So here's the lion constellation. And Regulus is the heart of the lion right there in the chest between the feet, the front feet. Right? So here he's circling the planets in red uh, to show you that when we get to this point, it looks like the Jupiter is stationary, and then we get into opposition, and then finally we pass Jupiter okay, in the orbit. Yeah, you can kind of see that happening there. Then on December the 1st, 3 BC, the planet stopped its motion through the fixed stars and began its annual retrogression, okay, this optical illusion where it looks like it's going backward. As it did so, it once again headed toward the star Regulus. On February the 17th, the next year, 2 BC, the two were reunited. Jupiter continued this backward retrogressive motion another 40 days and then reverted to its normal motion through the stars. So it's looking like Jupiter has gone, it's got in, in alignment with Regulus, that's the first conjunction, and then it kind of goes up above, still on top, still in a straight line with Regulus, that's the second conjunction, and then it makes the other half of the loop this direction, it comes back down, still above Regulus, that's the third conjunction, and then it makes its way forward again. Okay? So from the Magi's perspective, Jupiter, the king star, is making this loop, or halo, above the king, uh, the king planet is making this halo above the king star. There. And this is called a crowning. And so to the, from the Magi's perspective, the king planet is crowning the king star within the king constellation, Leo. So we really do have three kings here. <laughs> okay? Not wise men, but a king planet, a king star, and a king constellation. Okay? This movement placed the planet once again into a third conjunction with Regulus on May the 8th, 2 BC. So this all started uh, in the previous year, um, the, the first conjunction, if you remember, in September of 3 BC. And then eight months later, it ends in May of 2 BC. To an appropriate observer, it would appear that Jupiter was making a circling crown effect over and around Regulus, okay, the king planet around the king star. With each of these apparent changes in direction, the planet briefly becomes stationary within the background of the fixed stars. Again, that's an optical illusion. On December the 25th, 2 BC, Jupiter came to a normal stationary position. Now, this is the first of the six days where it looks like it stopped. This time directly over Bethlehem as viewed from Jerusalem. From Jerusalem you have to look southward toward Bethlehem. Bethlehem is about five, six miles south of Jerusalem. And from Jerusalem's perspective, looking at, at Jupiter, <clears throat> right below Jupiter would have been Bethlehem, right on the horizon. there. At precisely this time, the planet stopped in the middle of the constellation Virgo, the Virgin. The sun was also standing still in its usual winter solstice, right? Because the beginning of winter, around December 21st, 22nd, so this is, this is pretty close to that time period, okay? The word solstice is Latin for sun stand still, or sun to stand. There, S-O-L of solstice is, of course, the Latin word for sun. <coughs> So it looks like it's stationary for two different reasons. <coughs> oh, yeah. <coughs> Dr. Voss circled the, uh, you see in red there, the December 25th, 2 BC date. 